You are listening to the daily meditation of the Word of God brought to you by Adal, the apostolate of the laity in the Archdiocese of Douala. Lord, with a humble and thankful heart, I come to you this day seeking my daily bread. Give me your word and do with me what you will. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John, chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Cleopas, and Mary of Magdala. Seeing his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near her, Jesus said to his mother, Woman, this is your son. Then to the disciple he said, This is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Chers frères et sœurs en Christ, aujourd'hui nous faisons mémoire de Notre Dame des douleurs ou plus souvent Notre-Dame des sept douleurs. Notre-Dame des douleurs est l'un des nombreux titres par lequel nous vénérons la Vierge Marie, notre mère. Ce titre souligne l'association de Maman Marie à la souffrance de son fils. Les sept douleurs font référence aux événements Relaté dans les évangiles qui ont fait souffrir la mère de notre Seigneur dans la mesure où elle accompagnait son fils dans sa mission de sauveur et de rédempteur. Nous pensons évidemment à Marie au pied de la croix de son fils Jésus. Et jusqu'à nos jours à Jérusalem, là où notre Seigneur avait été crucifié, L'image de Marie avec cette épée transpassant son cœur reste l'image la plus importante après celle de son fils. Et ça en est ainsi depuis le premier siècle, dont les chrétiens ont toujours vénéré à Marie cette capacité d'endurer la souffrance. La souffrance qui s'impose à nous lorsque nous embrassons la volonté de Dieu en toutes choses. Of course, one cannot think about the sorrows of Mary without thinking about her presence at the foot of the cross when her son bowed his head and died to human wickedness. At the same time, that moment at the cross was the highest point of her suffering and pain if Christians of all ages have been drawn to the souls of Mary, it is because the souls of Mary also tells our individual stories as well. It is a story of all who find themselves enduring pain and suffering in life simply because they seek to do God's will, to accomplish God's will and purpose in their life in, the little, in their own little ways. The pain must not be physical. In fact, some of the deeper souls of Mary must have been about her, her dealing with all the unanswered questions about her son. Moments of her worry, moments of her fears and confusions, when the circumstances of her life seem to have stood in sharp contradiction with all that God had promised her son. Moments of soul are part of our life journey with God. These are moments where we find it difficult to reconcile the suffering of our lives with the promises of God. 
moments when God seemed to stand in silence to our sufferings, even though it is for his sake that we suffer. Mary in her sorrows teaches us human response to God's silence. It is our own silence, our own holy silence. The Bible says that she stood at the foot of the cross, according to the Gospel of John. It also says earlier on that Mary pondered everything in her heart. In human terms, she was silent. Silence that makes us pause while God speaks to us. Silence that allow us to see God's action where human eyes see failures. Let us pray. Our Holy Mother, Our Lady of Soul, pray for us. Grant us a grace of silence that we may learn how to listen to God from the bottom of our hearts. Amen.